Today, we're going to visit five artists, collectively known as the men who paint, for an exclusive studio exhibition and sale. Hi, my name is Ken Van Rees, one of the men who paint, and I'm here in my studio wanting to talk to you about a couple of paintings that I've done here. This painting here is called Valva Green Rainforest, and it's based on our trip to Haidi Gwai last summer. We spent time in the old village of Old Masset, and every day we would take these individual day trips to different parts of the island to paint various scenes and uh, understanding a little bit about the uh, Haidi culture. This particular painting comes from a, a, a hike along uh, White Creek, which is on the way to Agate Beach on the north end of the island. And as we were walking through these forests, I was just amazed at the amount of moss and the greenery. And as a forester, I've been spending a lot of my time in the boreal forest and working with jack pine or white spruce or trembling aspen. But I've never really spent any time on the west coast in these rainforests. And it was just truly spectacular. So as we were on this hike uh, along White Creek, uh, we came upon this place, which was just a lot of moss on the old logs that have fallen down, as well as epiphytic moss growing up in the branches of trees. And it was just really intriguing for me to see all this greenery and uh, it was just a really fascinating place to be in. So I decided to take a stab at trying to paint that and capture those uh, moments and that atmosphere of the, the rainforest. And I started off with a smaller painting. And uh, as I had painted this painting on the fourth time, I was just not really happy with it. And then one evening I just sat down in total frustration, not knowing what to do or where to go with the painting. And I picked up a couple books off my bookshelf. And one of them happened to be this book uh, by Gustav Klimt in, uh, called Landscapes. And uh, most of you will know that Gustav Klimt is uh, known uh, for his big painting, the, the Kiss, but he also did a lot of landscapes and he's a painter from Vienna. And as I was going through this book, looking at some of his different paintings, I came across uh, several of his forest landscape paintings and he really he was using a style of pointillism. And I think that just kind of grabbed me and I thought, all right, maybe I can try that with this particular painting. And uh, one of the paintings that really uh, stood out to me was the one called Park. And uh, so I tried that on the smaller painting and I was really happy with the results. And I thought, all right, I need to try and see if I can blow this up into a bigger piece and see how it works. And uh, so this is the result of that painting. And I think it really captures the mysteriousness, the intrigue of these rainforests and the amount of moss that's growing in these places and just how much green is in there. And so, uh, as you can imagine, walking in some of these forests with all that amount of moss, it just looked like velvet to me. And so that's hence the name Velvet Green Rainforest. Hi, my name's Greg Hargarten, and we're here in my studio today to have a look at a couple new paintings. This first one is called Lake O'Hara Boat Launch. As a member of the men who paint, I've spent a lot of time traveling and painting across Canada and abroad. Canada is a beautiful country, and one of my favorite places to paint is the Rocky Mountains. I first visited the mountains as a boy, and I was awestruck. In my 20s, as a full-time musician, I spent a great deal of time in Banff and Jasper playing music. Since this meant working at night, it allowed a lot of time during the day for exploring. I've always been impressed by the quiet power and ruggedness of the area. The winters are cold and unforgiving, and the summers are short and sweet. The weather can be unpredictable. It can be sunny and warm one minute and snowing the next. There's a magic in the sheer magnitude of the Purple Mountains. It's one of the truly untamed parts of the world, and hopefully always will be. In the Rockies, I'm always reminded of how small we are in the grand scheme of things. Hopefully, this painting illustrates that, with its makeshift wooden dock and its ragtag collection of rowboats and canoes that are cobbled together each summer for the tourists. Good evening, everyone. My name is Paul Trotzier. I am the owner of Hughes Art Supply, which is where we're filming this but I'm also a member of, more importantly, the men who paint. I'd like to introduce some paintings to you tonight that I've done over the last little while. This first painting is called uh, Pictographs of Mere Belly. This is a 24 by 48 painting, acrylic on canvas. Uh, and what this is, is this is showing the pictographs that are actually on 
Mirabelli Lake. We were lucky enough to be flown in for a week um, by Greg and Olivia Ewell and their We Too program. And so the Men Who Paint spent a week in a fly-in fishing camp doing these kinds of work. This, this particular rock wall is actually about three stories high and it's absolutely littered with pictographs. So that's what I'm detailing here. Hi everyone, welcome to my studio. I'm Cam Forrester, one of the men who paint. Our group is primarily known for being plein air painters. We're out in the field, we travel around Saskatchewan, around Canada, we've been in the Yukon, Algonquin Park, and Haida Gwaii, and we've even traveled to Germany to paint together. When we're painting in the field, painting plein air, we're typically working on smaller pieces or sketches that we can use when we get back to our studios and make them into larger pieces. I'm going to show you a few paintings today that I did when we were on our trip to the Hickson Marabelli fly-in outpost camp in northern Saskatchewan. One of the things in Hickson Lake on our way to Church Island, there was a fire that had gone through uh, years before and there were still remnants of some of the trees and all of the rocks were covered in moss. This painting is titled Moss Blanket. I'm Roger Trottier. I'm a member of the uh, Men Who Paint, and I have three paintings that I would like to show you. The first one is uh, this one, which I call the Nut Bay uh, Respite. And uh, Nut Bay is located on Lac La Ronge. Uh, it has very rocky shorelines, and in this particular instance, the, uh, this point uh, rests into a muskeg area. Uh, on that particular afternoon that I was working, the uh, wind was very high and uh, there was a blast of light coming from the, uh, the right and uh, somehow uh, I got the feeling into the painting of uh, the, the movement and I'm, uh, I'm quite happy with that. This painting is uh, on an 18 by 12 canvas it's uh, selling for $390. This is the uh, second painting that I did for the exhibition here in my studio. And uh, this painting is called A Duck's Lake. And it's from a scene actually just from south of Duck Lake, Saskatchewan. This painting really came about because of our exhibition that we had uh, this past February at the Saskatoon Club. And uh, during the show there was a gentleman who was from Australia and after he had gone through our exhibition he came up to me and said, uh, you guys are the men who paint and you're from the prairies, but there are no prairie paintings. And as I thought about it, he was right. I certainly didn't have any prairie paintings. Most of my paintings were from La Ronge or from Hickson from our trip a few years ago, or else some of the paintings were from uh, Alberta from the mountains. And so this really got me thinking that maybe I need to concentrate a little bit more on trying to do some prairie landscapes. So this particular scene uh, I captured last summer as I was driving up to uh, Davin Lake, northern Saskatchewan. And as I was going down the highway, the yellow from the algae in the lake, as well as the yellow uh, plants growing along the shore really caught my eye so I turned around and uh, came back to this site and got out of the car and uh, took a lot of photos of this particular uh, wetland scene, uh, prairie scene and uh, spliced all the pictures together to kind of paint this particular landscape. And for central Saskatchewan this is really a typical uh, prairie landscape. In the foreground here we have a lot of pasture where cattle could be grazing. In the background we have a traditional agricultural crops such as canola and wheat. And since I am a forester and I love trees, there are a lot of shelter belts in this particular scene as well. And so for me this kind of encapsulates a typical prairie landscape. And uh, it was a real challenge to paint because the painting is so long and, and presented some unique things to think about when trying to cover a canvas 
uh, this wide, but it was really enjoyable and I hope that uh, you like this canvas as well. Hi, welcome back. The second painting is called Hicks in Mourning. Last summer, the men who paint were invited to take part in the We Too Artist in Residency program, sponsored by Adventure Destinations and Greg and Olivia Ewell. We were flown by a float plane to a remote camp on Maribelli Lake, where we spent 10 days exploring and painting the area. The lake is part of the extensive Churchill River system, a collection of interconnected rivers and lakes that span from the northern Rockies in Alberta to the Hudson's Bay in Manitoba. Although the area has been a travel route for centuries and played a huge part in the fur trade of the 1880s, it's still wild and remote. In fact, we didn't see another single person for the entire time we were there. This painting is of some of the islands on Hickson Lake, which is connected to Maribelli by Smith Narrows. I've always been fascinated with these northern islands. I've painted a number of them throughout the years, often from a boat, which is always a unique challenge. They're always a treat to come across, and they're a joy to paint. Each island seems to have its own distinctive personality and story, forged over years of relentless weather. And it's easy to see that weather on an open lake. It's what we call in Saskatchewan, the living skies. These two islands are like brothers, facing northern blizzards and summer storms together. I love painting big. This is a 42 by 60 canvas, acrylic uh, on canvas. Uh, and if you were watching on Instagram, I did a whole series of right from stretching, gesso, all the way up to how I mock these up all the way to a hot mess and then how I pull it back out so it has some clarity. Um, I love Lac Orange. It's one of my favorite spots in the world. Um, this is called an evening of reflection. It's worth about $3,200. And one of the things that I really enjoy detailing is this reflection piece that's down in here and this varied thing of this thick black spruce and poplar bush that we have going on in the Precambrian Shield. I hope you enjoy it. What's key for me when I'm on site is that my plein air paintings and my works are basically sketches and I'm worried about the composition so I spend most of my time on composition and style and design more so than trying to get anything that's realistic. So this would be one of my typical sketches in the field. The painting that we're looking at is Morning Shadows and this was done from a sketch that I did right out the front door of the outpost camp at Maribelli Lake. Every morning we get up at about 4.30 and there'd be this wonderful light that would come through the rocks and on to Maribelli Lake and through the trees. It was a spectacular place to be. This painting is 16 inch by 20 inch. It's oil on canvas and it's framed and it is available at $900. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to share these paintings with you today. You can uh, find out more about us from following us on Facebook with the men who paint or follow me, Cam Forrester on Facebook and Instagram, uh, men who paint uh, website and camforesterart.com. Uh, this one was done in northern Saskatchewan uh, along the Churchill River system and uh, it's titled Fire Stick Trees on Rocky Crest. I was particularly taken with the uh, condition of these trees which uh, survived in part from a forest fire and that's how we got the name fire stick trees. The uh, clump, the hill that they're, they're uh, around is uh, Precambian rock and uh, 
I particularly like the way the trees seem to be talking to the uh, cloudy sky. For more information on these and other works, visit menwhopaint.com.